Uh, we live? Uh, we live? Seems good. Alright, let's continue with space exploration. Uh, did a couple of little design things off stream. I actually got the sushi all worked out over here. Uh, it's actually pretty similar to the shape we've got here. And what we're going to do is have everything except for the output go back up here. Iridium plate loops back onto this thing. And uh, the, uh, the other two are going to be put back onto the belt up here. Uh, so basically... These contraptions bottleneck a half belt into a quarter belt, so we get 50-50 uh, reliable two different resources on half the belt, and we bottleneck Iridium plate from taking up more than half of the other half of the belt. Uh, that other half of the belt also gets shared with the output, particle beam shielding data, and also some recycled Iridium plate. And since each of those requires, uh, we seem to be missing some modules, maybe? Uh, considerably less than half a belt, or considerably less than a quarter of a belt for each, uh, resource here. That's going to be totally fine. I did experiment with speeding it up a bit, like if we put, uh, speed sixes in this. Um, the rate calculator tells us that there are enough resources coming in. However, the inserter at the end doesn't... It's it's not quite accurate to say it doesn't keep up. But because the resources have been split up somewhat randomly, a single inserter doesn't necessarily manage to pick everything up. But we can prove that it is not actually a throughput issue. If we spam a bunch of inserters over here, we see that the same throughput is actually sufficient. Uh, I also figured out some of the logistics to Sanj. Um, I wonder if we've got... We don't have some scaffolding up here, do we? No. The only thing here is a RoboPort, is uh, repair packs. Um, but what I've come up with is, I mean, this was the plan all along, but the, the implementation for it is a bit more interesting than I knew that I would be implementing at the time. Uh, basically... It turns out it takes a lot of resources, uh, like more than a chest or two, far more than a chest or two, uh, to feed the cannons that are going to fire explosives and iridium ingots down to this planet, so that these delivery cannons can fire um, copper core fragments back up into space. Uh, because of that, I get to design an actual, f actually functional uh, implementation of my new trick that I just figured out, which is uh, going to be using this design. But, where is it? Oh, don't tell me I didn't actually blueprint this part. Um, I don't think I did, but it's pretty easy to replicate. Spaceship, Space Truck Mark II, that's just default, I think. Yeah, so what we're going to do here um, I'm just going to temporarily swap these for 
purple chests. So the bots will empty it. And... What we'll be doing is setting the requests on these chests dynamically with the circuit network. We can't directly read what's in these chests. However, if we can account for everything that might be in those chests, every, you know, copper core fragment, for example, and read it from a circuit wire, we can read, uh, let's see, let's, where am I looking for this? Uh, good question. Uh, we can use a RoboPort to read the total logistic network contents, subtract what is in our storage chests, and that will give us the amount that's actually in these green chests. So with that, we are actually able to tell when this thing is fully loaded. And we'll be able to use the vast majority of the chests uh, in this thing to bring over our uh, explosives and iridium ingots so that we can supply this thing. Uh, I have a couple of minor tweaks I might need to make to this. I think I blueprinted it. It's basically just settings and stuff. Hey, Whiskers. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay. Those already have settings. Um, I'll wait till I've actually got something to point this. Oh, I do. Cool. Uh, I do want to make one minor change to this, which is I'm not actually going to read from the delivery cannon chests themselves. Um, we should probably connect this to power. Probably. And how's our ship? I think it's totally refueled. Yeah, and we've got another 50k here, and I think it didn't take long to refuel in the first place. How much scaffolding do we have? Uh, 795? I think that's probably enough to finish the build up here. Let's see. Tile ghosts. Uh... 550. Cool. Do I have everything here that I need? I'll try and avoid having to come back down if possible. Uh, where was it? I think we've built everything, except for some drills, which is fine. Um, why don't we balance the ones that we do have? We've got eight versus five. Wait, how do we have 13? That doesn't sound right. Hey, Heineke. Good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I think we've got some more drills over here, probably. No, apparently not. In that case, yeah, we have an odd number of drills, four, five, plus eight. It probably doesn't matter, but I'll make sure it's as balanced as, as it can be for now. and seven. 
Oh, that's a cute kitty. Okay, let's... Oh, I also need more delivery cannons. Um, we don't have those here as well, do we? No. That's actually a problem. I need to make sure I have enough up here. Well, I only... True... No, I want to make sure I build all of the cannons up here. So, let's see. That would be... Six. Um... Whatever I've got here, minus six is 14, I think. Okay. Whoa, don't respawn. No. That'll do for now. And I don't want to mess with the inserters since they've got the wire connections and stuff. So it's going to be if copper core fragment... Well, I'll wait till I finish the build in orbit before I try and explain it. Otherwise, we're going to be pointing at ghosts. Uh, I don't actually need some of this circuitry. It's pretty much only the iridium plate we'll be putting in here. We do want to filter it and not take the explosives. Uh, we should probably connect to power. That seems like a good idea. I don't think we can reach this across. Probably not. Okay. Let's go all the way down here, I guess. Oh, we're already there. That'll do. Islands are pretty great. Don't bother destroying this cliff. And I should probably... I guess I'll leave that RoboPort stuff and the radar construction pylons in place for now. Because we're going to want to come back here and build this. It'll just be a hassle to put it back. And... Did we not put this down? Hello? Robots? Where are my robots? I have a hundred construction bots. Oh, it's probably a bot way down here that was trying to build it. Yep. There it goes. Alright, so coal mining has begun. Not that it will be particularly soon that we can start really using it. And let's get back up into orbit. Uh, meanwhile, in Nalvis orbit, uh, I need to swap out these chests again. And if I can remember how the wiring was, we're reading just this 
fluid storage tank on the right with the green wire. Um, and I think also setting requests on this one. And we're also using this red wire to get all the way up to our spaceship console. I don't think we actually need this many lasers. If anything, it's going to slightly slow the ship. Um, because we have more than we need. I'll put this over here. A little bit more solar, why not? And this connects over here. So the red wire is going to be um, inputting to the spaceship console. Green wire on the left side. We're going to be setting the requests of 30 uh, buffer chests. Which is going to look less weird. Like that, I guess. And up here. Is that all of them? No, this isn't connected yet. That should be every chest. Okay, so we're going to set requests for every one of these. Including the one in the middle, but that one's going to be carrying bots and repair packs and little things to resupply the outpost or expand it. And we're going to want a, a constant combinator just for setting the clamp IDs. So much storage, indeed. Uh, it's something like 144... Well, let me do the math again. Uh, 4,800 core fragments times 30 chests, 144,000. And it takes 16 core fragments to make 10 copper ore. Except we get a productivity bonus of 56%. So it's almost like one to one. We get like 120, 130,000 uh, copper for each trip from one of these ships. Uh, but first we have to send out enough iridium plate and explosives to supply the delivery cannons. And unfortunately, the bots will oversupply um, these chests. So we also have to implement a system with extra storage that stops requesting whichever resource once it gets dangerously high. So that's fun. I think this is as far down as it can go. Yeah. Uh, so I think that is just about it. Um, this is pretty close to the limit of what can take off from Nalvis. Uh, so it's obviously not taking off from a planet of radius... Uh, let's see... 8,845. That's why we have to do all this stuff with cannons. Speaking of taking off, I'll be doing just that for now. And let's go to Sanj Orbit again. Okay. Away we go.
ETA an hour? What? Okay, that was... took a second to accelerate, that's all. It's fine. Now then. Also... I don't know if I said it already, Fatboy Not So Slim. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Hope I'm not getting drain damage. Mucky, good to see you again also. How you doing? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Alright, let's update our blueprint here. Um, I don't... If I'm going to make a version of this that resupplies, like, for, for building and stuff, I can easily change this. So this is the Space Truck Mark II. Fantastic. And we're going to have the... Oh, I forgot to set this part. Uh, we're going to do clamp ID, I don't know, this number. Because why not? This one goes to this one. And we're going to we're going to have the logic for takeoff and destination external to the ship. Uh, so theoretically we could send these from place to place dynamically. Though I don't think we're going to be doing that anytime soon. Um, Alright, so let's update that one more time. Actually, come to think of it, I think I'll just use the uh, the ID that we're already using for copper core fragments. Then again, maybe not. Yeah, I don't want to mess with the stuff we've already got in place. Um, so I think... Oh, we've got a block up here that's actually not in use. That's perfect. Alright, so this one's going to be that. And that. And then we don't have room for this. We're not going to be using this same logic. And we're probably going to... When the spaceship lands, it's going to destroy these um, concrete tiles if I don't get rid of them. Um, but that's where we'll be going first. Ship should be ready for launch. It is full. Fantastic. Let's send you to Nalbus for now. And then we'll set up the automated supply system. Away you go. I'm going to have to set up an energy beam to energize these things when they land, of course. I've probably got one that I'm not using at Calidus at the moment. Uh, it's not this one. These two, I'm pretty sure, are busy. Actually, I lied. I need to visit Calidus. Okay. Um, but the heat capacity on those ships is so large, we can probably get a few trips in before that's uh, entirely necessary. Alright, so once we've placed our scaffolding, I'll drop the blueprint again. Send orbit DC chests. Uh, 
where did I put it? Here. Okay. So what we have here is uh, quite a bit of throughput for explosives, because we need it. Not as much for iridium ingots, because they're very stack dense. Um, and the reason we need so much storage for this is, as I said before, when the bots load up the ships uh, with the green chests, they overdo it quite frequently. Um, you don't get a precise count, so this is eventually going to overflow if each ship brings exactly what it needs to fill itself up, uh, or tries to. So we need to have extra storage and stop requesting one resource or another sooner or later. Um, so all of these are requesting explosives. Explosives. These three are requesting... Well, this one, I suppose, is requesting delivery cutting capsules. Um, we're using a belt here because... The bots will balance across multiple chests, but if we get low, we really need to make sure the cannon shells get to both resources. And the lights are just to show how full our um, cargo ship is. Oh, why are my bots not building that? It's fine. Okay. So, this would be a lot easier to explain if we wait till our ship gets here. But that's going to be a minute. Uh, so let's see, on the, green, uh, on the green wire on the left, we are setting... Oh, where'd our ship go? Alvis, of course. I should call this Sanj 1. Uh, so green wire on the left is setting the requests... Oh, I didn't connect it yet. Uh, setting the requests for all of these chests, 30 of them. Which, in this case, is going to be fill it up with core fragments. Full and Sun Gaming, thank you for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. Ben Wu, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Also, how's your stream today, Fallen? The Legion of the Fallen Sun is attacking. Uh-oh. Factorio, fantastic. I am, thanks. Good. Good, good, good. Yeah, so when the ship is here, the requester chests are set to request 4,800 copper core fragments. Uh, on this side, well, there's a lot going on on this side. I ignore this little thing um, for now. That's not part of the spaceship circuitry, basically. So this thing is going to send what is going to become the requests on each of the buffer chests when they're getting loaded at Nalvis. Um, oh, hello. Okay, I've, I've found a piece of the puzzle. One thing I couldn't figure out when I was building this was when I was requesting uh, 11 delivery cannon capsules per chest, I was getting like 50, but I can see here the signal is actually 48. So how did that happen? I'll just do the math again to double check, but um, when we send, when we send core fragments by delivery cannon, whoops, uh, we actually only get half a stack. Hey, Veldak. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. 
It was fantastic, thanks, working on moving from our starter to building the foundations of our megabase. Nice. Probably an accidental misclip or misclick or type, maybe. Um, so, because it only sends half a stack when it comes to core fragments, we actually need 96 uh, stacks to fill a chest. Well, not, not 96 stacks, but 96 delivery cannons. Um, so, the delivery cannon recipe that we're going to be using this time is the updated one with 5 iridium plate, 5 explosives. Um, so for explosives, it comes out to 240 per chest, I believe. Um, that is going to be set on the requests over here. Uh, so let's see. Uh, 96 divided by 5... I mean, no, 96 times 5 is 480... Oh, that's right, it was 240 when I didn't realize it was only half a stack each shot. So 480 uh, iridium plate, uh, sorry, iridium ingot comes out to about 40 because we're doing ingots turned into plate with a productivity bonus of 1.56. Um... Yeah, sorry, so it's 480 and 80. Uh, and the amount of delivery cannon capsules that it takes to send that down to the planet is 4 for the iridium ingots and 10 uh, for the explosives. So 14... Uh, we should be requesting 14 delivery cannon capsules per chest. Um, I've got a little thing here where we're doing each less than zero, and then we have negatives for how much we actually want. Uh, output each times one times 480 is our largest target. And then we just have some negative numbers to offset that. So because we only need 80 uh, iridium ingots, if we're requesting them per chest, that's negative 400. Uh, since we need 14 for the delivery cannon capsules, uh, that should be... whoops. 466. Yeah, I definitely did something weird right here. So 480, 80, and 14. 14 delivery cannon capsules in order to send them down. That should be fine. Okay. So we read from these static... Uh, request a chest to see how much stuff we've got. Um, I would love to have like just sort of a generic storage system and then the bots send stuff to chests uh, but it's it's really messy trying to set that up when you're taking from buffer chests in the first place. Um, so we're just putting it straight into requester chests that are set to read contents. Uh, if we drop below 40,000 explosives, we're going to be requesting 480 per chest, uh, 8,000 ingots, 3,000 delivery cannon capsules, and which is to say almost every ship is going to be bringing this stuff. We only need this in place because it'll eventually bring too much. Uh, so then we send that to our green wire back on Nalvis. That's going to set the requests on those chests. Uh, we also get the contents of 
these passive providers on the green wire and red wire times negative one versus everything that's in the logistic network. So logistic network minus this part gives us the amount of uh, uh, gives us the amount of copper core fragments that are in the ship. And then if that gets to... I can't set this to exactly 144k because occasionally the bots don't fill a chest up properly. So we're setting it to greater than or equal to 143,900. Uh, if that happens, launch spaceship. We're always sending the destination signal. That should be Navis orbit, actually. Which is planet 316. This was from testing on a uh, sandbox save. Uh, this thing here is just for manually launching the ship in case we have to debug it. Uh, and last but not least, this little thing right here is also going to set requests of whatever's in the logistic network that doesn't belong here is going to go back uh, in the, the one... Uh, how should I put this? Utility buffer chest that we have in the middle. Um... So here we've got a whitelist of everything that's supposed to be in this robot network. Um, and then each greater than zero output each, taking input from that and from the robot network. Uh, and then that gets passed to that one chest as well. And since these signals don't interfere with um, the spaceship console, and conversely, the spaceship console signals don't interfere with setting requests on that buffer chest. We can just do both of those on the same wire. Um, and as for... The reason I have both red and green wire on this, I don't actually remember. We're reading from the logistic network contents. And the red wire is... Minus... Yeah, so just like here... This uh, decider combinator right here gets an input of what's actually in the ship. So, so do the lights right here. And we just have anything greater than some number uh, to show how much is in the ship. Um, let's see, sand orbit DC chests. Uh, this should also be... Senj DC chest or chests? I guess it's just the one chest. Senj DC chest. Senj orbit DC chests. And then... On Nalvis. Uh, I probably need to get the spiders involved for this part. Um, I don't think I necessarily just want to paste this on top. Partly because there's some stuff in the way. Uh, that should be okay. The only thing that doesn't match up is some piping that's not going to get messed up by placing this. Uh, do those roboports have circuit wire connections? I, they do. They have the same ones. Okay, I think... I hope... We can just put this here. So, on Nalvis, we will be... Setting this to... Why are you trying to take off? Oh, you're just doing it. No! 
that wasn't just an intent. No, stop, 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 stop. What happened? Why did it come back? Okay, it's probably trying to take off right now, but it doesn't have enough fuel. That was a terrible waste. Um, why did it take off? Nope. Planet orbit five six seven. This is the same ship, right? I mean, I don't think there would be another one. Nope, indeed. Uh, this is the San Juan. Okay, so first of all, our target is actually Sanj Orbit, which is Planet Orbit 65. Uh, where's our ship? Planet Orbit 65. And under the following conditions, we send the signals Planet Orbit 65 and take off. Uh, that is green signal equals 4. What does that mean? It means uh, copper core fragment equals 0 in the ship. Uh, which we're not actually reading these chests directly on the green wire. But what we do is... Uh, how do we get that again? Uh, this isn't going to be needed in this instance. We're just bringing water in from the right side. Um, okay. So first of all, we... Whoop, no. First of all, we check if there's enough iridium ingot, explosive, and delivery cannon capsule in the ship, depending on what's getting requested. If one, two, three of those conditions is met, plus a uh, copper core fragment in the ship equals zero, then we're allowed to take off. I have no idea how it decided that that condition had been met. Maybe we didn't get a signal from this yet. Sanj Orbit DC Chests. Is that our signal? Sanj Orbit DC Chests. Yes, I believe so. Uh, 480, 80, and 14. Let's see. We should be able to see that somewhere. 480, 80, and 14. Perfect. Uh, and this little thing here... Is another negative a million for a signal we don't want. Each greater than zero output each. So we're not reading the copper core fragments from that circuit. Uh, that goes to each times negative 30. So there's 30 chests that we're trying to fill up here. And we want a negative number for how much we want of each for the magnitude. We get the logistic network minus what's in these storage chests. That part might have to change a bit. Um, this part was just for testing purposes, but the point is we've got three, chest, uh, three chests here for explosives, one for iridium plate, two for iridium plate rather, and one for delivery cannon capsules. Alternatively, I could simply read from every single um, storage chest in this network, which, considering that we've probably already got some of those here, maybe, might be a good idea. Moin, BG Neiman, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, this is going to be fine for now. Explosives. No, we do have 2.7k explosives. Where even did we get that from? Probably because we were going to be making weapon delivery cannons, yeah.
Um, so I need to know where all of the explosives are. I don't actually see any over here. Seems like we've got one thing per chest. Except I remember the bots were bringing explosives from this direction. So I don't know where our explosives are. I'm fine. Hope you too. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Um, this is the whole robot network, right? Yeah. So, where are these explosives hiding? We've got 2.7k. Uh, our target is 480 times 30. 14,400. That's a surprisingly large number. That's like a train load and a half. Or more. There is a delivery or two on the way. In the ship? Yeah, but the explosives that just got delivered to the ship came from somewhere. Wait, are they all in there? We've got about 92 per chest. 2,760. Okay, they're actually all there. Yeah, good call. Uh, so we need to request Iridium Plate as well. I'm just realizing... I don't actually have a big train drop-off in this block. Not for solid items. I could turn this into a drop-off. If we're not going to have four different types of items here. Hmm. Alternatively, I could have short trains delivering the explosives. I'm not a big fan of that. Considering we need... Uh, 80 times 30. Uh, 7.2. Huh. 7.2 short trains. 7.2 cargo wagons of explosives each time one of these is set to take off. That's actually kind of a problem. Um, how many storage chests do we have in this entire block? Uh, it's kind of hard to see. 113. Why is it an odd number? I thought they were maybe all here. That's 106. Plus 6, 112. So there's one. Oh, this storage chest. Where is it? No? I thought there would be a storage chest associated with the trash system. Oh, no, it's over here. Okay, that has a filter on it. That's good. Okay, so I think... I think if we just circuit wire all of these chests... And then get that signal up there somehow... To this combinator... then we don't have to worry about keeping these in a specific place. I didn't put any filters on these. Nope. Although these ones... These ones do have filters and we don't need to read from them. Okay. Let's connect all of these via circuit wire. And on the other side as well. I don't 
I, I can't just connect them up here. I could piggyback off this robopod, I guess. It's kind of tacky. But it gets the job done. Wait, did that go to the front? No, we're good. And this is just going to have no condition on it. So then I can get rid of these chests. So we've got the contents of the logistic network minus uh, what's in the storage chests over here. As far as these three resources are concerned, that gives us what's in this ship. In fact, as far as everything except for maybe construction bots? Maybe this should be a storage chest. Uh, it's fine. I'm not worried. I'm not actually checking what's in here. We're just setting it. Yeah. So these three resources, we're going to check against what's in these chests here to deduce what's in this. Uh, once these three conditions are met, plus there are no copper core fragments, we're going to take off. And... Uh, I just need to... I need to deliver iridium ingots, explosives, and delivery cannon capsules uh, at a high throughput. And to do that, I probably need to change the shape of something somewhere. But I don't want to waste any space. But we don't need, we probably don't need this many, like we've already got two of these landing places that we're not using from this block over here. What is going on? Oh, core fragment Vita Melange is not supposed to be, oh, are those two connected? Uh, there's a problem, I think. And this one's picking... Yeah. Yeah, that's a problem. These two whitelists need to be combined. Copper... Copper ore, barrel, iridite. Copper ore, barrel, iridite. Vita melange. Uh, and this is... Coal, actually. And holmanite. And... Good grief. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Holmanite, coal. And these four. And coal. And then that goes over here as well. That'll probably sort that out. Um, yeah, we're probably not going to need all this but I'm loath to waste what's already been built. I guess I should just not worry about it so much. Um, so let's maybe set this up as just a drop-off. And we're going to put some purple chests. A 
going to available bots. That's fine, I guess. We're going to use this green wire to read from the logistic network. Wait, does that actually not connect to the left? It's showing the red wire first and it's too big to see anything else. Plus one vote to make a new block? Maybe I should. Uh, I don't wanna. <laughs> also, I need to get a, uh, do I have a construction ship somewhere? Nalvis Orbit, perhaps? Where did I put the other two? Outposter... Outposter 2 is with... Not with me. Capellus. Outposter 1 is with me. Outposter 2... Is... In... The system that has Deadwood. Did it actually finish what it was doing here? We've got... Only one energy beam receiver, um, which is enough for now, I think. It was probably, I think, I, I think I was here expanding the solar power. I probably wanted to add some more energy beaming. Also, why is there no media point defense ammo? Uh, oh, that's right. I completely forgot to actually put in media point defense in this location. <laughs> um, my bad. Do we have any more scaffolding? Yeah, we do. Okay, let's copy our media point defense resupply thing that we built. I don't suppose we can use the same shape in Capellas? Why is that so big? I mean, technically, yes. We could put it, like, here-ish. Well, it's going to be a bot network thing anyway, so why don't we just... Actually, let me take a look at... What is it? Calidus orbit, real quick. I think we had one that was on the opposite side. Not quite. We can probably use this. So I don't have to shape it all over again. Um, probably shouldn't have parked this ship here. Yeah, would have been good if I didn't do that. This'll do. Okay, so in that case we need some scaffolding over here. That's actually a decent fit. I am noob, but what the heck is this mod in the train? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, this mod is called Space Exploration, and it is a gigantic expansion on top of the main game. Uh, you can... well, you need to, actually. Uh, build spaceships, uh, rockets, delivery cannons, um, all kinds of interplanetary and interstellar logistics. Amazing, indeed. It is quite impressive of what they can pull off with just a mod. I mean, look at this, uh, look at this map of the, uh, solar system. 
How you would mod that into Factorio, I have no idea. Okay. I'm getting a little bit distracted. Why are our bots still in motion here? Oh, it's this thing, isn't it? Let's just get rid of that for now. That's just the convoluted circuit that we have to try and take a little bit of stuff, various things from the buffer chests. It seems to be having the bots go in a loop. It has nothing to do with the circuit that resupplies the spaceships, per se. Um, I'm scared to actually leave since it's such a long trip, but I'm pretty sure this is all set up. I mean, ev everything else that we need to do, we can do remotely. So I'm going to head back to Nalvis. And so we can resupply and hope that we didn't mess something up. Uh, in the train. Thank you for the follow. I have always found that the bootstrap to get off the homeworld a bit difficult. Everything just takes much more time. Yeah, um, personally, I would probably maybe not include biters on the homeworld or just give it more resources at the very least. Um... It didn't need to take as long as it does just to get off the first world, considering the whole point of the mod is everything you do after that. Uh, so that's going to take a little while to get back. We're looking at probably more than 40 minutes game time, which is more than double that real time. We are on an interstellar voyage back to Calidus. Uh, so in Capellus, we're finally building this scaffolding. How much do we have left? 2.3k. And this is 4k. Okay, so this is as much... This is about as much solar power as we can build for the moment. Um, I wanted to put this here. Star 315 is incorrect. This is star 104. So this is saying if we've got less than 500 media defense installation ammo here, uh, send a signal to send a resupply ship with a, a small resupply ship with just ammo to here. Oh, wait a second. I... There's something I maybe didn't consider. Media defense installation ammo resupply. Uh, this one? Interstellar media defense installation ammo resupply. And this one... I think I turned it off temporarily. That's good. This should be... Media defense installation and we resupply. Where is our interstellar ship for that? I think I called it the Quartermaster. Interstellar Quartermaster. It's on the way back. It already resupplied, I think. Angulus here. Yeah. Okay. So that's going to take a minute. I don't think we need to worry about not. A apart from the fact this needs to be the interstellar channel, not the interplanetary channel. Otherwise, we're going to send a little ship that couldn't. And I'll just double check that's on the red wire specifically. For both of these, that should be red wire. Yep. Okay. Now then. Uh, this one. The other thing we need to copy is... 
Um, these two parts don't have to be connected. Oh, they sort of do, actually. Uh, green, the re green wire from these blue chests has to be able to touch this combinator. Okay. Let's grab the tiles. And... Back to... Capellus? Yeah, I've really kind of parked this ship right in the way. But we can probably just put... This has to be vertical, like north to south. Yeah, I really did park the ship in the worst possible place here. Let's move it. And anchor. Um, I'm going to anchor it all the way over here just to be absolutely sure I don't make the same mistake again. Um, we're going to have the station for our ship here somewhere. Oops. And I'll just double check uh, if I can find it. Quartermaster. Interstellar Quartermaster. I'll just double check there's going to be room for it. Yeah, there's definitely going to be room for it. I could put it two, four, six tiles to the right, and that would still be okay. But we're going to need to... Oh, where's that blueprint gone? We're going to need to move, uh, use a pylon or two. to get these this wire signal across anyway so let's just put this here and I won't connect actually that doesn't have power does it let's make that a pylon substation What is this? Radar construction pylon. Okay. Why so many connections? Looks very messy. Anyway, more importantly, green wire. Measuring the amount of ammo we have. Goes to... That looks like it's connected, but it's not. Goes to here. And then clamp ID, negative six, I'm pretty sure that's right. Yes it is. That's gonna take our one logistic bot to make sure we get the whole thing started. And then the rest is bots take from the buffer chests and put them into media defense. Requester. Okay, but I'm surprised we don't have any media defense installation ammo here. We do. Appar Wait, no. Are you kidding? Robot. We do have logistic bots. Where are they? Uh, I think they're all in this chest. Yeah, here they are. Okay, how do we get... This could actually be kind of tricky. 
How do we get some logistic bots into the network? That's going to be construction bots first. It's only one stack. We're just going to have to put all the construction bots in here until we get one logistic bot in motion. And what are we down to? Seven, four, one, and repair packs. No. <laughs> okay. I see how it is. Unfortunately, there are no filter long arm inserters. So as soon as we run out of repair packs to put in the robot network, we'll finally put one logistic bot into the network. And once that happens... Here we go... Robot. Go. Thank you. Alright, now we can put this stuff back. And robots are going to be delivered here, which is going to put them into this network, which is going to adapt. I keep putting logistic bots in until their available bots is uh, greater than zero. Okay, so now we have some uh, media defense installation ammo that will be here before we get our interstellar delivery of lots and lots of it. Also, uh, Sindrin X2. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so once these bots stop moving, assuming we leave... Well, it doesn't actually matter, but I would prefer, just to be sure, that we leave at least one logistic bot in this roboport. Uh, then I think I'll send this thing back to Nalvis Orbit. I'm pretty sure it's done everything that it came to do. Um, we've given this thing an energy beam receiver. It's not actually receiving enough heat to run all of these, though. Do we have any more? How much power do we have? Because we don't have more scaffolding to expand it, and we've kind of... Well... If we're willing to use this space over here, we haven't really run out of surface. No power to bottom right inserters. Bottom right. Uh, it's not power, it's ammunition. Oh, no, you're right. Okay. Substation. It's just this one right here. And we should have enough ammo for that to actually matter. Good. Indeed. Blood trail. Best emote. Well, good emote. Uh, let's see. Um, I don't really feel like going to the trouble of paint, plastering solar panels all over this. How much power do we have spare? Uh, three gigawatts. So I could set up the bare minimum of another energy beam emitter. While I'm here. But I think I would like to just put as much of this here as I can. And then head back for resupply. Cool. 
Uh, let's get rid of the unnecessary radar construction pylons. This can go here, I think. Do we have any more scaffolding? Yeah, we do. Okay, this is a bit cruel. Let's put a charger here, at least for the moment. Okay, I'll give that a bit more attention in a minute. Hopefully I don't forget. We are still about 40 minutes out from Nalvis Orbit. Is there anything we can and need to do here? Yes, there is. Um, I need to set this up as a drop-off. So we've got the green wire telling us how much ion stream we have. I also want... Oh. Oh, that's perfect, actually. Yeah, I don't need a robo network to do this. If I can reach this over here, and I'm just gonna, oops, I'm just gonna use this chain signal. So we're reading from all of these storage chests uh, for how much stuff we've got. Our default provide, ooh, yeah, I don't want that. Uh, our default provide threshold is so high that it pretends none of this is here. Request threshold is 100k for the fluid, and I'll go with request stack threshold 160, which is a long train. And we're going to be requesting Iridium ingots, explosives, and delivery cannon capsules. I don't know if we're putting those into the rail network somewhere. I don't think so. Considering that we're building them on the spot here, I would say the answer to that question is no. And it's probably the way to go about it. Um, I don't think we're ever going to do the weapon delivery cannon thing again, since we can do energy beaming. In fact, I'm sure of it. So let's get rid of this. And let's get rid of whatever stuff we were requesting to keep that going. We did have a short train bringing explosives. I guess it doesn't hurt to leave that much in place. Iridium plate and explosives is to support the... The heavy girder was for the delivery cannon. I mean, the weapon delivery cannon. I don't remember what... Uh, where did it go? Wait, where did it go? I don't remember why we were bringing Holmium Cable and Rocket Control Unit. That is probably all to make this stuff. Except Holmium Cable. Why... Were we bringing Holmium Cable here? I actually have no idea. Been watching your VODs for a while. Got a question. What should I bring for my first trip to space? That is a very good question. There's so much stuff. Uh, I would probably suggest it if nothing else, to write a literal checklist. Um, you've got 500 stacks to play with. You will lose some of that, but, like, that sounds like a lot, but 
once you're actually in orbit for the first time, you're gonna be you're gonna be missing X, Y, and Z. Um, the main things that I was hurting for when I got up here was uh, let's see, what are they called? Uh, big electric motors. Yeah, intermediate products, which you can't send up by delivery cannon. I would suggest bringing a lot of those. Scaffolding? Yes, indeed. Marsh, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I plan on bringing 20k scaffolding if I can fit it. You can fit 50k if it's the entire rocket, so yes. I was thinking about bringing motors. I just put 1k lubricant, but I should just throw in motors. Yeah, it's probably more stack efficient if you bring the motors as well as more convenient. Um, you do get a bunch of free fluids up here, which I think includes lubricant. I could be wrong about that. Um... But by far the main thing um, that I kept wishing that I had up here was advanced intermediate products, uh, which you can't send up directly by delivery cannon. Um, that'll help a lot when you're trying to build this stuff out. Okay. Uh, why are we stopped? Oh, I know why we're stopped. Uh, that's my bad. I forgot to make sure we had power. Speaking of power, I'll have slightly more if I get rid of that. And speaking of speaking of slightly more power, we don't actually need eight laser turrets, I'm pretty sure. Even the passive drain on that is... Because we're bottlenecked on electricity for speed with these ion ships, um, every little bit counts. Especially when you consider that we don't actually have that much power surplus. Because these things consume 10.33 megawatt each uh, when they're running. We have 5.82 times 2. 11.64 uh, So... Yeah, 23.28 megawatts versus uh, 20.66 megawatts. Uh, so our surplus is only 2.62 megawatts if these things are running at full speed and we're running the uh, ion engines. All of that surplus would have to go into... Uh, all of that surplus goes into charging our lasers, basically. Um, which the laser's max consumption is well over... 2 megawatts for just one of these. Uh, so, because we've got a circuit bottlenecking our top speed based on accumulator charge, which is what we're going to have... Uh, how much power we have is what we're going to have to bottleneck our speed on anyway. I think with such a narrow margin, even just removing some laser turrets, we're going to get a higher average speed. Naturally, when I first built this thing, I over-engineered the shoot-down asteroids part of it, not knowing that quantity. Alright, thanks, no worries. Um, so where are we? We're still pretty far out. I need to get our Capellus ship. Why have you stopped? No storage? 
I'm guessing it's no storage. What? Why do we have zero construction bots? Allegedly. We've got, like, 50 construction bots that are just hovering. But it says we have zero construction bots. Hey, T Hacks and chat. Raren, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, I don't know how I can fix this without player intervention. Uh, literally all of our construction bots from chests are in motion. Okay, there's actually 44 here. If I can just build a RoboPort here. I can't because, oh no. Yeah, when I swapped this out, I didn't realize I was severing those robot networks. I don't know why these ones are misbehaving the way they are, but we do have some construction bots here. If I could just reconnect these two robot networks, that would do it. That would get these bots to move again, I'm pretty sure. But I don't see a way to do it. I could move the ship again? Ugh. Uh, how about... Okay, this... we're gonna have to get creative here. I don't know if there's room, actually. We're one tile off squeezing this RoboPort through here. Um... Ah... Uh, if I could just get this RoboPort to shuffle over... Obviously can't move this RoboPort anywhere. Not to the left. One off, indeed. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, what do you think of... Uh... This thing I threw together. Yay or nay? Deconstruct a solar panel? The bots won't actually do anything. Oh, they do, they do, they do. Okay. Uh, I may have to ration what we do with this. Hmm. I think I deconstruct the signal transmitter. And then I can shuffle this thing over. Uh, we probably... Maybe... Do you need to deconstruct some panels? I think that's going to do it. And then radar construction pylon goes back here. Well, that accomplished something. I'm just gonna leave this RoboPort here for now. And I'll grab... Do I still have that copy-paste? Surprisingly, yes. I'll put that back there. It seems we've got all of our bots back. Whew. Okay. Roboport settings? Or is that a K2 thing? Uh, uh, unless you just mean these, that would be a K2 thing. 
I still don't understand why all those bots stopped moving. But... At least we were able to get them moving again. Now they're doing the hub thing over here, even though it's all one network. Do we have too many bots? No, we've got 44. Less than a stack of construction bots. They definitely have somewhere to go. That is... bizarre. Maybe they'll sort themselves out once I let them finish this job. Have they got storage to put stuff in? Yeah, that's the first thing I tried. Um, I changed this one to a storage chest. Okay, let's pay attention to another problem for now. Um, so I was reading from these chests versus what we're going to request over here, which is explosives. Um, let's ask for a lot of explosives. 480 times 60, which is two ships full. 28,800. Explosives, 30k. Iridium ingots, we're looking for uh, 80. That's only 4,800. And last but not least is delivery cutting capsules, which I think we decided it'd be fine to just build on the spot. Probably. I don't see myself building a dedicated block for delivery cannon capsules. We've got a beacon and four machines, which is way more than enough to support all of this. So, I don't think we have to worry too much. I do probably need to bring construction spiders down here. And if we're doing that, we need to request Iridium Plate, stack size 40, that is, uh, let's say 12,800. Nice. Okay. So, condition met. Core, copper core fragment equals zero. Um, ingots are insufficient. Explosives are insufficient. Delivery cannon capsules are insufficient. We have... Uh, where is it? We're setting requests on this end for this one chest. For... Substation pylons, media defense, ammo, bots, etc. I need to add some of these things to the requests to bring bring it to this logistic network. Uh, and over here is where we're sending the launch order. So I'm pretty sure I can switch that back on, no worries now. Uh, this was just me doing some math. That, that won't be needed. This one, not anymore. And here's our explosives. That was quick. Um, how much heat do we have here? Only 9,995. 
Um, it is a bit unfortunate that we're running the condenser turbine from here. But I think we'll be okay. Oh. Energy beam... Receivers. I think we already placed all of the emitters that we had. Yeah, no. We didn't functionally forget anything for this trip. Look. Spell more. Take care. Uh, okay. So that was Capellus. The bots have calmed down. Do we have any over here? We have 14 logistic bots, which is what matters in this instance. What are these bots doing? Why? We have a... We have an unfiltered storage chest here. Oh, is it not connected? I think I... Maybe see the problem. Hello? Can they actually put that there? Yeah, they can. Okay, there we go. Definitely shouldn't have been so hasty disconnecting... Well, I didn't realize I was disconnecting. Removing the uh, radar construction pylons. Okay. How far out are we? 35 minutes? Cool, cool, cool. So, we're just waiting on this one to do its thing, I think. It's already fueled up, except for the liquid rocket fuel that it wasted. Uh, we've got... This was turned around at some point. That's fine, I guess. Alright, that'll definitely help with the whole refueling thing. Oh, the spiders are here. Good. Let's make sure that rocket fuel is connected on both sides. I don't think it is. Yeah, I think this side only gets supplied by these. Well, we have plenty of rocket fuel now, anyway. Right, so we're going to do delivery cannon capsule. We're going to give it speed modules. If we have sixes, all the better. Oh, whoops. We do not have sixes handy. Oh, yes we do. Fantastic. Alright, so that is almost one delivery cannon capsule per second, just from the two of these. Uh, we might need a lot of them, so let's do this. And then... Should be fine. Probably need more than one recipe worth in these chests. Why is that train on the right filling with explosives? Uh oh. Because I forgot to whitelist explosives for this. Wait, what? Oh, I see the problem. Uh, hmm. I need to... Okay. 
I'm just going to copy this over here real quick. So, stuff I need to whitelist is explosives, iridium ingot, and iridium plate. Explosives, ingot, and plate. Otherwise the bots will return it to the mall. Good catch, thank you. Sindrin. Cheers. Alex Hudson, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oh, we've already got capsules in here. That's good. So we're only aiming for 14 of those per chest. Board 20, Lamel. Uh, can we maybe set these requests a bit higher? So the bots actually deliver that as a priority. This ship should be ready to take off automatically once it gets all of its stuff. Hopefully it hasn't run out of heat by then, but that would take quite a while. Let's check on Calidus again. Bots have all come home. And we've run out of scaffolding for now. Uh, why don't we place whatever solar panels we can. And we'll see how much power that leaves us, because we should have... Yeah, we have some energy beaming stuff here. But then we don't have the scaffolding, unless I want to use this, which I kind of don't. We don't really have anywhere to put it. So I'll make another trip with this ship. Hi, T-Hacks and chat. See, sheep say meh. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. All right, going to remove tile ghosts for this stuff. Actually, no, nah, I'm not going to bother. And let's go back to Nalvis Orbit. Away. Are you going to have power problems? It doesn't look like it. Okay. You should be... Oh, you've already... No. Yeah, you should be taking these out and putting another one in as soon as this accumulator charge drops. Cool.
<clears throat> Your inverse muted. Ouch, sorry. I hope that didn't sound too terrible. Thanks for letting me know. Um, so yeah, this, uh, I don't even have to go to the trouble of draining the belt to fix this, uh, with this sushi design. It's, it's really quite effective. Lovely throat noises, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so what we have here is a quarter belt bottleneck. On the ship you had building the solar panels, it still had eight lasers. On the ship I had building the solar panels. I thought this was the outpost uh, that we just sent back. Is there another one? What ship am I on? This is the outposter. And we've got the outposter 2. Coming back from Capellus, that was that ship. Oh. Wait, what? I must have looked at the wrong one. Yeah, that's fine. It wasn't bad, I didn't notice until Fatboy mentioned it. Okay. Um... All right, let's uh, let's focus on this sushi. Yeah, so what this contraption here does is for each half of the belt, it bottlenecks to a quarter of the belt coming through here. So we have half a belt coming down this way. We bottleneck this recycled bit as well through here. So we've only got half a belt. And then we split it in two, so out here we only get a quarter of a belt. And then we recycle that with input priority. So basically this whole thing is, is all of that so much, is just to say only a quarter of a belt through here please, on each side. Uh, and then we do that separately for each of the three input resources. What resource are we missing? Plating. Uh, we do that separately for each of our three input resources. And then once they complete the loop, we just recycle them again. Uh, and that's basically it. Obviously, it's going to wait until we start consuming some resources before this backed up part of the belt starts looking right. Um, but you can see it quite clearly on this side. We've got half of the space on the inner belt taken up by blank data cards, half of the space on the outer belt, uh, outer lane rather, taken up by Iridium Plate. And that leaves room for space platform scaffolding on the inside. And on the outside, it has room for the... Uh, particle beam shielding data, and some recycled Iridium plate. I just noticed the stream go very quiet. Okay. Maybe, uh... Uh, maybe my filters and such do a better job at mitigating that stuff than I would fear. So yeah, this is a combinatorless, uh, totally belt-managed 
uh, sushi system. It would be... If you want amounts other than like half of half a belt or something like that, you're going to need more splitters, uh, which is going to get pretty messy pretty quickly, especially if you want ratios that are not something to the power of two. Uh, like one over something to the power of two. Um, but it's very, very robust. We're not reading from a memory cell or reading everything on the belt except for the parts where there's underground belts or splitters. Um, you could take stuff off the belt, you could put stuff onto the belt, it'll all sort itself out. It's very, very reliable as far as sushi goes. I prefer using solutions like this where possible, indeed. It's also kind of pretty. Like, it is definitely one of those oddly satisfying things in motion that Factorio uh, and games like it tend to produce. Okay, so where are we actually at in space science? I think one, two, three, four, this is everything. Whoops. Um, for material science four. Products finished. 243. We've had some extended material catalogs. That's fantastic. How much do we have? Only 375. Is that all that we've ever made? All time. We've actually made just under 8,000. Um, which means it's been delivered somewhere. Probably here? No? Maybe? These could have been left over from before I updated this recipe. Did we get any delivered up here? Yes, we did. And we got our material science 4. And we probably ran into the exact same problem that I had to patch for the other science and forgot to get around to patching it for this one before it became a problem. Fantastic. Let's fix that, shall we? Not gonna lie, that things in motion feel is 80% of the reason I play games like Factorio, and why not? It's, uh, it's very satisfying sometimes. Especially when you have that on top of the satisfaction of just finishing a good build and watching it all in motion. That you've, you've got the satisfaction of this problem that you've solved and the oddly satisfying motion of it and the fact that it's all working perfectly and the fact that, hey, I am getting stuff. How, how many... How many little different bits of the monkey brain do you want to tickle all at once? Uh, speaking of which... We're not going to see it in motion for a minute, but my, my new pseudo-balanced loader that I'm trying out here uh, is pretty simple, actually. Um, it can actually keep up with a full belt for each cargo wagon. And it's, it's as simple as this. Uh, these five inserters are just set to anything has to be greater than zero, enable, disable. And the last one is unconditional, and it reads hand contents hold. That's it. So these ones will pick up nothing until this inserter goes to pick up something, and then they'll all swing at about the same time. It'll definitely not give you a perfect balance across this, but it'll be fast and somewhat balanced, which if you've got full belts coming in, like four belts on each side, that's pretty much what you want. I just pictured an emote of a monkey. 
A monkey tickling its brain with flip top skull. <laughs> My brain tickles. Okay, let's put this thing here. And. Hmm. This goes here. Can I. This needs to be a filter inserter. Oops, I knew something was off there. And then this needs to be the material version of all of these. And then we've got a bunch of stuff in these chests that's wrong. I kind of don't want this to go back to the mall. Can I maybe... Uh... What can I do? How about this? Blacklist? Put this stuff back onto the belt. There's no room. All of that is tier 4. <laughs> um... Okay. What if... How about... How about I move this over here? We put a steel chest here. I... Give this chest the correct connections. Remove this connection. And then... Stack inserter. Now why are none of these picking up? That is tier four on the belt, is it not? Oh, this is black. This is blacklist. There's your problem. Make temporary bigger loop, then you will have space on the belt. Uh, I think this will get the job done eventually. We're not going to have a solid belt coming down here for too long. And this gets to keep the same shape once we're done with it. Cool. So how much uh, material for have we actually made? We have a thousand. Nice. What should we research? What have we been waiting on material for? For We could do Naquium processing. And now we're actually don't have any excuses left to not start mining this stuff. Uh, we could also... We actually already could have increased the spaceship structural integrity even further. Although I don't want to redesign everything too often. I want big chunks of research upgrades before we bother retooling things. Uh, not really that fussed about energy shields. Well, why don't I go to Material Science Pack 4? Here we go. Oh, I think I remember looking at this. We just have... Intermediate product, intermediate product, Naquim processing, and some upgrades I don't care about. Uh, this is what I really want. High temperature heat exchanger and high temperature turbine generator. That's what I'm most excited about. And for that we need Bio4 as well. Rip. I need Bio4 for this also. So, yeah, pretty much just heavy assembly. And then we need tier 4 bio. Ooh. If I were to not finish tier 4 bio first and get deep space science 1, I could get antimatter.
Okay, let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Nacrium processing. This one's going to have to wait. And then let's get this one. And I don't think we're going to be able to do anything after that. Um, just yet. Yeah, so we need to start on... Wait, didn't we do Biofor? Surely not. Uh, Science 4. Act 4. Yeah, no, we haven't done Biofor. Okay, so how difficult is Biofor going to be? Let's see. We have... I think I already did bio like it's these four, isn't it? Well, this one looks very straightforward. Two second crafting time, though. That's really fast. Especially if genetics facility is more than crafting speed of one, which I think it is. Crafting speed is four. And this recipe is two seconds, so without any speed buffs, it's half a second. Three in, one out. There's no percentages for this one. It's just really straightforward. Okay, what about this? Three in... Uh... Recycle the significant biomass, 50% junk data, otherwise it's basically the same but slower. I don't know if I've made Vitalik Epoxy yet. Epoxy. I have not. If I recall correctly, it's actually pretty straightforward. Yeah, 2 to 2 to 4 and we can do it on Narvis. Okay. After that, we have Neural Anomaly Data, which has Processing Unit Blank Data Card and Advanced Neural Gel in. I haven't made Advanced Neural Gel yet. Uh, it does spit out 50% Advanced Neural Gel, 50% Bio Sludge. Well, we're going to just hook up the advanced neural gel output to the input and that's just going to be effectively 10 consumed so it outputs bio sludge except there's going to be some pipe difficulties there 50% junk 75% recycled processing unit that's relatively straightforward except we need to make advanced neural gel and then, uh, I feel like I've done this recipe before. Like, not this exact recipe, but probably the same layout. Where recycling significant biomass, uranium-235. And we get a blank data card turned into radiation resistance data. And we also get contaminated by sludge out. I think it was uranium that we were swapping that was the first time that I really tried doing this swappy thing here. Instead of having the recycled product go onto an output belt and then loop around, we just have direct insertion. Was it this one? This is the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have three physical in, two physical out, and a fluid. Versus three physical in, uh, three physical out, and a fluid. Except I think we could literally just change the filter on this. Okay, the only tricky part is we can't use a long arm 
We would need to set filters blacklist on a filter inserter over here. So we can't use a long arm for this to have a condition for two different resources at the same time. But other than that... Contaminated bio sludge. It's almost the same recipe. So, one to one to one. And this one's one to one to one as well. Yeah, we just have... Well, we can't use the exact same layout here because this one's not going to work. Uh, we have to ensure that the... Uh, significant biomass and uranium-235 comes in on the same input belt, close to the machines. That way we can use a filter inserter uh, blacklist, like so. Um, but other than that, it's basically going to be the same thing as what we have here. Ooh, antimatter? Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I had a little sneak peek at it, uh, just a little bit. Uh, so comparing it to liquid rocket fuel and ion, um, well, more to the point, comparing it to ion. Where is it? It was under this thing, wasn't it? Uh, it actually consumes way less energy. I mean, it consumes 10 times less energy when it's going. It is, the engine itself is a bit bigger. I don't like the way it doesn't fit with the, uh, the booster tanks, but what are you going to do? But yeah, it's interesting that at our higher technology level, making our spaceships, all of a sudden power isn't the bottleneck. Or it's definitely not much, as much of a bottleneck. Okay, so this was using radiation facilities, right? Yeah. Why don't we start? by copying that block. I think I'll build it over here. Or I'll build it relatively close to that uranium there. So that's going to be... Was it this one? No. It's up with that belt. Is this broken? Oh, that's the output belt. It's actually completely backed up. Oh, I did limit these chests, but still, that's kind of good. Uh, there it is. All right. I'm going to switch off this input. Now, is this an input? No, it's an output. Going to copy this block, put that input back on, and then paste this here. And because I turned the combinator off, I don't have to pay attention to this until it's done. Uh, let's double check our ship. Still cruising. 23 minutes, okay. I think the Interstellar Quartermaster must still be on its way home. Yeah, this is the bare minimum um, for an Interstellar Ion ship. Uh, it's just transporting lots and lots of media defense installation ammo at a time, so it doesn't have to get around too often. But that said, it is going to take over an hour to get back to Nalvis orbit. 
to resupply. It's fine. We don't have any ships that are stranded these days. Doesn't look like it. If we click on this little preview and we can see the engines moving or the lasers firing, we know that it's working. You should name it the Defender. Uh, I think I already took was it Fatboy's suggestion for the name? That's why I called this one Quartermaster it is. And this is this is the absolute bare minimum for an ion ship. This will only work in solar system because it's running off a solar panel. It's kind of cute really. All right, back to designing our space science. Uh, we are going to want... Uh, what was it? Oh, this is the wrong recipe. Let me just double check which one we're after. It is radiation resistance data. And we're almost certainly... It's probably easier if we just get rid of this side for now. Oh, this thing had prod 3s. I mean, speed 3s. We can probably bump down the machine count on this one. Let's go tier 6 modules, defaults, well oh, that's all speed actually. This is going to be overkill, surely. 14.48 uh, radiation resistance data per second. It's not as fast as I thought, but we can put some efficiencies in here. Or we could use tier 3s. Now I want to minimize the machine count. I might even just design it to fit as much as possible and then limit it to like one beacon. Name it the phallus? <laughs> no. How... Is... Is that really what you see here? <laughs> I think it's a bit not quite the right shape, right? The Quartermaster was the plan for it to be the holder of all the ship items, basically an inventory ship. If it's just doing shuttle runs of media defense ammo, maybe another name works, I guess. I don't want to spend all day trying to think of a name. Um, especially since I'm bad at it. Okay, so we're going to want... Filter inserters here. Get rid of these inserters, lest I get confused. Firefly? Uh, we're gonna do the output product here. Output fluid's the same. The recycled product is significant biomass, as well as uranium-235. Significant biomass and uranium-235 goes in this chest. And then those two items are going to be on this belt. And we're going to read from the chest that goes into this machine. Set filters blacklist. So as soon as an item is in this chest, it's going to be banned from being picked up by this inserter. 
And this one is going to go here. And these two, like so. Hey, hey, El Puncher. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so the next lot goes here, and here, and here. then blank data cards will be on the far belt oops unless we wanted to do some belt gymnastics just to have that slightly closer but there's no need even if we full speed ahead this thing it's only one blank data card per second per machine so that's gonna go there And we'll have our blank data cards here, and then something like this. Let's just double check the rate for this whole thing for blank data cards would be significantly less than one belt. That's going to be easy to balance. Okay. Copy, paste, flip this part. We still need to um, make sure the chest wire is connected, which it should be to the middle so these ones go over here. Let's just copy paste this much. One, two, three. And these should all point to their input chests. Research complete. Uh, that was Naquium, wasn't it? Naquium heat pipe, superconductive cable, and Naquium plate. Naquium heat pipe, Naquium heat pipe. And we also have Naquium ingot, uh, Naquium plate, washed Naquitite. And Naquium powder. I actually did the Naquium ingot build when I did all of these. It was slightly different. The uh, Iridium and Holmium are actually the exact same shape and same throughput. Uh, Holmium, sorry, no, Beryllium is a little bit different. And of course, Naquitite was completely different. Oh, that's right. I remember now. Let me see if I can find it. Um, yeah, I built this whole thing for like as much as I reasonably could fit in this block. Uh, and then once it was complete, I realized, oh, the input for, what was it, raw Naquium? I think. Uh, let me grab a combinator here. Naquitite. Stack size 10. Um, yeah, stack size 10. So I made a build 
in the sandbox mode, which had four belts of a stack size 10 resource coming in from the train network, which is going to be hard to keep up with, to say the least. So we can probably probably calm down a little bit on the throughput on this build. In fact, I might just build it again from scratch. Uh, anyway, for now, let's continue our build in space. Um, so this part is actually getting relatively close to completion already. I need to do the inputs. Belts, that is. Output fluid is mostly already good to go. I need these connected to each other. Um, what's our rate from all of this? I could probably slow it down a bit. It feels like a waste to put all these speed sixes in here at this point. Uh, it's actually only 28, 29 per second. In that case, let's get ourselves a archer right about here. And that goes down there. And how many tiles is this? Nine and nine and one. Eighteen, nineteen. Uh, I guess a nine and two fives. It's gonna have to be. Just want to say, I love watching the stream while working. Makes me feel like work is playing Factorio for some reason. Nice. Uh, Daniel, welcome, welcome, by the way. Good to see you again, if I didn't say so already. Uh, let's block this little dead-end part of the belt. I don't like having items stuck there until the end of time. This is going to be the pickup for radiation resistance data. This one's still going to be, uh, what do you call it? Contaminated bio sludge. And then, uh, it's probably easier if I just do these belts from scratch. Oh, this part. I didn't realize these were connected. Okay. Blank data cards. It's one to one to one input, right? Not counting the recycling. So effectively it's two, one to one to two because we consume twice as many blank data cards. So we'll put the blank data cards up here. The Uranium 235. And it was significant biomass, right? Goes here. Wait, what's the stack size? Five? Significant biomass stacks to five. Whereas uranium-235 stacks to 100, right? So I think I'd like to do a custom unloader for this one. Where most of these inserters are going to be for significant biomass. And 
The way I've done it, it's actually going to be kind of tricky to put things on the right side of the belt. Um, what if this instead? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So that's going to be 235 equals 0. That's going to be significant biomass equals 0. Get this little distraction out of the way for now. Um, it's not perfect ratio or anything. This is still a total of 25. Uh, a, a total of like 25 to 100 in terms of stack size. So this is this these five chests is actually only a quarter of the storage of this one chest considering that the actual item input ratio is one to one it's also going to mean it takes longer to get the uranium 235 out of the train but considering that our net consumption of U-235 is only 14.5 per second, and that's if we put tier 6 speeds in all of this. I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem. Oh, finished. Uh, now we're just waiting on Bio 4 for everything. Uh, we could do energy shield, I guess. Sure, why not? And also... Projectile damage I find less exciting than laser damage, because laser damage means faster spaceships. Unless I want to set up gun turrets for the spaceships. Okay, so... I'm just gonna put some constant combinators here to tell me which is which. This is uh, 235 and significant biomass. This is blank data card. And now it's very clear. So I might start with the blank data cards, because that part's going to be very simple. And actually, it's kind of messier if I start from the middle with this. It's our rate. 28 per second. I'll do kind of a proper one belt unloader for this. And we'll start from, let's say, the middle. Pretty sure fast inserters will be more than enough for this part. Probably yellows would be as well. Okay, I'm going to connect all these inserters and this part of the belt. Read belt contents hold, read hand contents hold, and enabled condition is everything equals zero. Copy that across. Don't forget to connect all of these together, and then if we merge it all, we'll get a nice, consistent, saturated belt, provided that we're oversupplying the belt sufficiently. Okay, so 
So just to keep it neat, I would like this to go over here. Oh, that's actually a perfect fit. And this part like so. Uh, that can move over a tile. So this would go here or here. Two off. I'm not going to be totally satisfied with this part no matter what. We'll live. And then... That part worked out to be a lot less symmetrical. I like that more. Okay, so now max rate for all of this for those two resources. Net consumption is only 14.48 per second. Significantly less than half a belt. So once again, we're just going to merge all of these into one belt. A Sigma Bean, good to see you, uh, say, good to see you again, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. The short distance of space underground belts is annoying, yeah, I can understand why they did it, like it does make for some more challenges, but at the same time, it is indeed annoying. Uh, that's gonna look bad no matter what. Even if I bring this in from the other side first, it's still gonna. There's not gonna be a way to get around this part. It looks good. Uh, so let's go with this. And this. That part at least is going to fit pretty well. Something like that. And then through here. That was actually pretty easy. Okay, I think I can get rid of these now. And probably fast inserters are fine for this as well. Considering the rate that we're going to need. Oh, and also... Connect here. And we're going to read belt contents hold for that spot as well. Okay. I think that's basically it. There's no junk physical output. 
We're recycling these two already. Link data cards on the long arm inserters. Uh, we just need to configure the LTN input. We're looking for... These three, actually. Okay. So, literally... Yeah, pretty much all I need to do here is... What's the stack size on this? Five? Cool. I'm literally just going to change this to this one. I'll just double check we're going to have the space for all of this. So we're looking for a little bit more than one train load of uranium-235. So we request another one when we're down to a thousand. Um, we can fit... Sorry... 48 stacks times 4 is 192. Uh, a, a train load is 160. 4800 times 4. Uh, 19,200. We're looking for 17,000. So that should be fine. And we've got 20 chests for... 2.4k biomass at stack size 5. So 48 times 5 times 5. 1200. Uh, 1200. Why didn't that other build run into problems? Probably because I had 24 chests for the biomass. Is this it? That's uranium. I must have miscounted something. 2,400. We've got... 48 times 5... Times... 3 times 4. 48 times 5 times 3 times 4. 2,880. Okay. Down here, we're looking at 48 times 5 times 5 times 4. 4,800. Yeah, there's tons of room for it. In fact, since the stack size is so small, I'm going to request a bit more. Let's just pretend we had, like, four chests. For each cargo wagon. 48 times 5 times 4 times 4. 3,840. Close enough. And I think that's basically it. Most of the time we're short on blank data cards, so it might take a little while to see results there. We have some, but we've stopped because of rough data storage substrates. Oh, they've both stopped. That's not great. Where are our substrates? Are they broken or just slow? I think they're broken. Um, we don't have any cargo rocket sections. I think I broke cargo rocket sections. How many do I have here? Uh, 40 packed and 54 regular ones? Oh, did I never get this train going? I used to use this to load up cargo rocket sections when I ended up with too many in the mall. Did I... I don't think I switched this off. I think I just made it a lower priority. 
Yeah, we've got cargo rocket sections here, what? Oh. We kind of don't. We're missing cargo pod. We're missing iron chest. And... Nothing else, judging by the look of it. Iron chest. Oh, here we go. Yeah, that's right, all these little builds, half of them were for stuff like this. We've actually got... 7.2 trainloads of iron chests in the train network right now. Provide stack threshold 160. Minimum train length, maximum train length is 6. Train limit is 1, but I'm pretty sure there's only one place it would be going. So, why... Oh, did I turn the input off? Well, there's your problem. Yeah, I think I was uh, phasing this out maybe a little bit prematurely. Okay. What? 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 Let me just get rid of these extra chests. Auto save. The ship will be slightly faster with fewer chests. But I should definitely put these ones in place. Okay, that should get things going. Uh, it's going to be a little while before we get back to Nalvis Orbit. The Outpost of 2 is still in motion. Still, I think it just recently put fuel back in. I'm gonna say still nice and hot, that would be a lie. Uh, it's gonna be a minute before it gets back. Alright, back to Nervous Orbit then. Uh, we have Uranium, taking its sweet time getting unloaded with stack size 100 and only one stack inserter per cargo wagon. But we don't have to do this very often. Uh, train limit 3, good. We're going to be waiting for a while on blank data cards and probably already have the significant biomass because everything's been packed up for a while. What are we missing here? We are missing experimental biomass, which is missing experimental lab culture which is missing experimental genetics data, which is missing... Uh, genetic data. Genetic data is... I think it only comes from here. I don't have a specific block for it. Genetic data is saturated, it looks like. Why isn't it outputting? Oh. No, that's blacklist genetic data. Why is this stopped? Biosludge has to be greater than 10k, but we're limiting it to, like, 5k. And I was going to say that limit actually seems to be working these days. Uh, not just this pump, but like the amount we're getting in from over here. 
But I say that, but this thing is creeping back towards 10k as we speak. But why did it make sense at the time to set this to... Enable disable by sludge greater than 10k. These ones aren't interacting with that green wire, they're just hopping across here. I'm not going to find any more hints this way. I think the point was just to not consume all of the bio sludge. Let's just say it has to be greater than 2000. Well, that's kind of good. It means it's not actually a resource limitation at the moment. And then... So it's going to be a few minutes before we see this new build in motion, but I'm pretty sure it's done. Radiation resistance data. Probably the easiest of our tier 4 bio data cards. We need to make heavy assemblies somewhere. Probably on the ground with productivity bonuses. Alright, what's next? I haven't actually done advanced neural gel and there was another build that I didn't make because I didn't have advanced neural gel yet. So why don't we do something about that? I'm guessing we have to make it in here. Uh, let's see. Advanced neural gel. It's actually a growth facility. And the recipe is significant biomass, bioelectric data, neural gel, and nutrient gel. I think we already have both of those gels. Uh oh, there we go. Uh, all time nu nutrient gel and neural gel. Fantastic. Okay, so this is in the rail network, this is in the rail network, this is all in the rail network. And then we have to deal with bio sludge and junk data card as secondary outputs. We get a junk data card out of our bioelectric data every single time. Alright, so two physical and two fluid in two fluid and one physical out. Uh, how slow is this? 50 seconds. Okay, I dare say we can probably use half belts for the physical inputs. Yeah, this should be a relatively easy build. Since just as many machines as we can fit probably going to be not that fast. Okay. So we're going to have... Vesta stations. Output stations. What were the outputs? Uh... Wait, which one was I doing? Oh, Neural Gel. Advanced Neural Gel. Two fluids. 
and junk data card. So we'll do fluid, fluid, and junk data card. And that way we won't need any fancy... Um, fancy circuits for the output stations. Significant biomass. We do need... Let's see. We'll do one fluid input here, and the other fluid input here, and then we'll do the usual shared belt input directly from the trains, like so. So we're going for... Significant biomass and bioelectric data. Signif and bioelectric data. Uh, what? Oh, I need circuit conditions on this first. Circuit wire. Read belt contents hold. Uh, read hand contents hold, enable disable, everything equals zero, is what we would do if it was only one resource, but we change everything to the resource that it's outputting. Significant biomass, and bioelectrical data. Bioelectric data, I should say. Copy that across. Make sure we connect this part. Uh, while we're connecting things that we're going to copy, let's do this. Connect all the chests. And voila. Um, okay, so, how many of these can we fit around a beacon, even? Wide area beacon. I think it's just going to be, like, eight. Probably done this before, as a matter of fact. I think it's going to look rather messy. Not like this, that's relatively neat. Is this it? Oh, that might be it. I might want to copy this. So this is one fluid in, two fluids out. I don't think copying that is going to be sufficient. But the maximum that we can fit might look about the same. Eight on each side. Hmm. Okay. Trouble is, if we rotate it like this, these aren't going to line up. The middle one is the same fluid, but this fluid and this fluid are different. We need to separate it by at least a tile if we're going to try having... Inputs something like this. Let's try a longer one. That's no good with the beacon. About a three. I'm 
Okay, that actually reaches. That might be as neat as it gets. Still have room for this part. And I don't suppose we could have... If I do it like this, then these two are going to be opposite fluids. These two are going to be opposite fluids. Hmm. Maybe? If these ones have their output fluids facing each other, we're going to have some challenges connecting those. The middle one is the same, and bio sludge is opposite on both sides. And we can't put them right next to each other because this bit would be all double fluidy. So the minimum number of tiles apart we can put them. Uh, is I'm not sure actually. Probably three tiles. But if we do that, I want the middle one connected something like this, if possible. But I think that probably entail something like this. Might not be so bad. Is this also a uh, one-off? Right. We can't fit something like this here. No. I've seen worse piping in my time. Where are the input output physical is going to go hmm especially the output at this rate not sure i think this is just going to have to take up more space than i would like it to I mean, it, it, it's already doing that, of course, but um, even more so. Actually, how slow is this whole mess going to be? Let's add growth facility to our things we might put tier 6 modules in. So if we multiply this by 4, somehow manage to fit all of that. We're only looking at 11.58 data cards per second. It's actually 1.15k fluid for each. So I don't think we're going to have trouble getting this as fast as we like. Um, because the physical items in and out are necessarily going to be... that they don't need to be that fast. It's actually the fluid that we want. Okay, I am going to take a short break. Back soon. Uh, in the meantime, let's...
uh, leave you with some LTN screensaver on Nalvis, perhaps? Soon, TN? Indeed. Okay. <laughs> Alright, we interrupt this spam for a message from our sponsors. Back soon. You know, thank you, thank you. I find it remarkable how in this playthrough I keep seeing stuff that, oh, that's the old way that I was doing that. I've, I've learned to do that, be uh, to do that better now even after playing this game literally for years still learning which is kind of neat actually okay let's see how we're gonna fit this stuff together oh god I, part of me forgot this is gonna be tricky and or annoying um, okay, I think for this section we should try doing, if not the same thing, then something similar. I actually, for the most part, like this layout, except we need to find room for the physical items in and out. So, what if... 
What if we had one belt between these two? And... These were actually one tile closer. So that would go there. Or I guess... Uh, either way is fine. Basically, this goes here. It's not the prettiest build, but I don't see how with these inputs and outputs one is going to construct the prettiest build. Not in a million years. Uh, how close to equidistant can I get this? Not very. One, two, three, one. No, that's perfect, actually. Okay, cool. So this part goes here. That also might fit well with the beacon. I probably want to shove the beacon up here a bit if I can. I don't suppose there's much hope of fitting this on this side. Uh, that would be a no. Not if we're leaving room to do it again over here. I might have to make an exception at this rate. Okay, that bit is shockingly close. Do these actually get beacon? Yeah, just barely. Just barely. Well, this could be worse. We need one belt, one product output physically. Um, I don't see how we're going to get the, the belt through here. What if... No. Can we save some space between these? If we don't do this, and it looks more like that. And then... And then what? I guess this could go up here. Underground belt could go there. Good grief. Fancy brain chemicals? In the Maholic, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, so these fit together the same, but we can actually get an output belt this way. It's not a very pretty output belt, but it's an output belt. And then the only thing that I really super don't like about this is uh, I would have to have inputs on the outside here as well, which 
take up more horizontal space than I would like. No love for long pipes? Uh, where? I've got long pipes here. I don't see where else I can fit them in this section. But can I save any more horizontal space? Is what I would really like to know. Energy shield mark four. Lovely. So I think we're Okay, I could always get spaceship research going. I was going to say we're down to stuff I don't care about, or stuff that needs bio, but that's not quite true yet. I could also do efficiency pack 4, uh, pack 8 rather. I don't know if I even want to bother with the tier 9 modules to be honest, but I think I saw recipes where they were prerequisites anyway. Okay. Um, I guess... If I really wanted to, I could stretch this out vertically. We could have a belt in between these. Hmm... That's a lot of bio sludge storage. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And it's half full. And this is bearing in mind that we do have a limiter on the production of bio sludge. This is just because so many things spit out contaminated bio sludge. Why so much? Because that's just how much we accumulated. <laughs> Like, I checked this over and over again, thinking I must have made a mistake somewhere where we're producing... What the? Uh-oh. Yeah, no, we're blocking this. This is just getting consumed over here, I think. What? Bio sludge. Huh. That's weird. I did change this recently. Or rather, I didn't change this part. If anything... If anything... Oh, I see what's happening. We're consuming this bio sludge before it gets to 5,000 with this build. Therefore, we're producing more here. Um, can I? Hmm. Okay, let's not do that for now. Let's say bio sludge has to be greater than. 5,000. It was actually set to 10,000 earlier. Maybe it should be. But why were we not... Oh. Yeah, this. This exact thing that's happening right now. Why were we not doing that? Uh, encoded network ID 2. And this is... Encoded network ID 2. So it should be able to take bio sludge from here and deliver it to here. So that we're reusing what we've already got instead of producing it here. But when I checked on it earlier, We'd stopped because there was no bio sludge? Oh well. 
Anyway, before I built this block here, I checked over and over again. Are we accidentally producing bio sludge here when we're not supposed to be? I also have a block dedicated for bio sludge, which it feels a bit silly at this point. But um, same thing, it's got output priorities, like super low output priority. It's a much higher priority to use bio sludge that we've recycled. Um, but yeah, I actually built some storage like this much or so, thinking, thinking maybe, oh, um, it's gonna like, it's gonna consume this all once we just make room for everything and get everything in motion again. Um, like this is probably gonna be way more than not, than enough. No, it actually turns out we needed a ridiculous amount of storage for bio sludge. Yeah, this is happening. It is taking the bio sludge from storage to feed this stuff. In my play, I got to near 1 million bio sludge before I read all the tanks. To limit based on all tanks in orbit, Lamal. Isn't there a recipe turning biosludge into oil so you can make rocket fuel out of it? Is there? I was actually looking for a sink for biosludge earlier. Sludge. And I didn't find what I wanted. Let's see, we've got plague rocket? No. Uh bio sludge into crude oil so that's a yes oh no it's it's meth methane gas and it's not that much bio sludge okay what's this uh bio culture we're already doing that bloat burst ammo don't really care and it's certainly not a consistent sink uh, nutrient, f experimental bioculture, we're already doing. Uh, genetic data, we're doing. Life support equipment is not a consistent sink. Same goes for pheromone dart. Nutrient gel, we're doing. Uh, nutrient gel, we're doing. That's a the methane recipe though barrels and plague rocket yeah we don't have a sink for bio sludge like not one we can use arbitrarily yeah Anyway, we're actually saturated. We had trouble with liquid rocket fuel for a while, but we're totally saturated on it for now. Okay, so what if... What if instead of this, we were to move this down a couple of tiles? We'll need some more underneath you there, but other than that. Move this up a couple of tiles. It should still all be under the beacon. And we could have either the input or output belt squeeze through here. And that would allow us to make the middle one here a bit tighter, I think. Um, in fact, couldn't we have done that anyway, now that we figured out this one? Yeah. Yeah, we could definitely just make that two tiles tighter. There wouldn't be room for the beacon, though. 
Uh, what if we do it something like this? And then just move the beacon up. Yeah, no, hold on. So that would go there, I think. And then... Uh, I might just delete all of this for now. Yeah, I th think this will work. Okay. So then... Output belts like so. Following the exact same pattern. run out of belt room for this, I think. We've got two tiles over here, and one or two tiles over here, depending on how you look at it. Um, but we don't need... quite as much question mark where's that off by one emote uh you mean this one do you need the extra underground pipes in between the buildings slash belt in between the buildings slash belt do you mean this part to get past the wide area beacon I was hoping I could get this part down to a couple of tiles if there isn't a machine on the other side. So that would go there. I think I can... Yeah, I think this is much simpler, actually. So that goes there, that goes there, and then we need some underground to make that part work. Go up one? Nope. Go up one. What, up here? Oh, you mean this? Are you manually running the game at 25 UPS? No. Uh, or is this how fast the game can go at this stage? Yeah, we've got too much happening. Uh, games 8 Gaming? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay. Okay, I think that means we can 
fit all of this. So if that goes there, that goes there. We're going to have to, if not move the pylon substation, move this stuff to accommodate it. What's your computer specs? Uh, 10700F i7. Uh, but the bottleneck is the RAM, which is 3200, but it, on the, on this motherboard, it's bottlenecked at, uh, uh, 2933, I think. But the belt can pass the beacon? Oh, no. Uh, how much we can spare one tile on that side, one or two tiles on that side. Uh, I think that might be okay. Um, I'll just double check. Yeah, the beacon does have to be between that. Huge RAM limitation on this mod pack. 30 gig RAM, you will probably be fine though. Uh, it's not the amount, it's the speed. There are unrequired, unrequired underground pipes there. Unrequired. Un as in unnecessary? Um, if I... Okay, this part won't reach past. I need to move the beacon and all of this down a couple of tiles. And then that still won't reach, will it? No. No, it will not. I don't think... I don't think I can move all of this down. Even one... T oh, God. Maybe I'm just trying too hard to fit the maximum number of machines here. When the RAM is 100% in use, the speed doesn't matter. It uses your hard drive. Uh, yeah, I'm aware of that, but we're not hitting that limit. Let me confirm that. Uh, this thing. Performance, memory. We are at... Only 9.1 gig in use. We're actually at like half utilization on memory. <clears throat> I hit that limit in my play, I guess. Different limits? Yeah, different bottlenecks, like uh, with different factories. Uh, I really underestimated just how much RAM speed would matter with a modern build. Or at least for Factorio. I mean, for other games, it's totally fine. Uh, yeah, if you if you do run out of RAM, it does use the hard drive. Um, a, a swap file or virtual memory, if you like. It is excruciatingly slow. The hard drive is not meant to be used for that. don't think I can fit 16 of these in half of a block under one beacon. I would really like to just because. I don't think it's re even remotely necessary. It would give us like 1.15k of fluid per second. Like we would need bio sludge to be brought in every like 97 seconds or something or ni 90 seconds maybe 
and also advanced neural gel every 90 seconds. Uh, the data cards, not so much. 690 seconds or 12, 11 and a half minutes. Can't you put the fluid in middle pipe on the left? As in... Oh yeah, yeah, that might, that might be easier. Just make a little exception to our pattern here. That might be a lot easier. Because we were able to go... Well, the belt might be a problem, but... So this will go somewhere like here. So this beacon... Let's say it goes here. We can have our belt there. And this part can probably be negotiable. I don't think we can get closer than this. Because we can't... Unless I can find a way to get this to here. Here. Well, maybe. If this part, that's actually. If this part goes up here and then something like this. We're getting into some serious spaghetti here. Uh, that just takes up this space when I was trying to avoid needing this part. Trying to make this part shorter. Also, that's the wrong connection, but... That part's relatively... No, it's not. Wait, what? No, that was correct. This would go here. Oh, of course, I could move this part up and down. So... If I move this down one tile... Then this could go here, which means this could go here, which means we can get rid of this nonsense. Uh, we need this to connect to here, but let's suppose... We actually are touching all of these machines, even if I don't move this up a tile. We're just barely touching the ones on the left. But we're very easily touching the top and bottom ones. So, that part... That part does connect already. I need to connect this to here somehow. Which I think I can by doing this. That is some fine pipe spaghetti. But I think it actually gets the job done.
What a glorious mess. Now, if I... If I do what I did here, but for the opposite side... So this is... I mean, I'm agnostic about which is going to be which. We could have two inputs, three outputs, or three inputs, two outputs. Um, the output is just junk data, and it's going to be pretty slow. 11.58 per second. So I really don't care how we go about merging or splitting this. But... I'm just going to remove this part, that's going to go there, we don't need this belt at all, I mean pipe, and then that's not going to happen to fit around our island substation, but we could move all of this up and down a bit. I'll just double check this works out. Actually, now that I look at it, Oh yeah, we need two fluids. No, we do still need, like, two spaces for this. That's, and that is probably literally this, but rotated. Uh, I think? Mostly? A couple of those undergrounds are slightly different but I think that just goes here or something. You aren't done yet? Never. Can't you put the fluid in middle pipe one the, the left? Fluid in middle pipe on the left? Uh, kind of no, because if these are f inputs are facing each other, they're the same fluid in the middle here, but they're different fluids on the outside. Uh, but yeah, I think this is pretty much it. Except I don't see any room for a substation in the midst of this... Uh, I guess we could squeeze the substation in here and still have it in the usual place. That was the solution to spaghetti. You've read it twice now? Oh, derp. It may be the case that I am running out of brain juice. Okay. So let's put this down here. We'll put our usual placement of substation pylon in the middle. Uh, this is the part where I would love to use editor extensions to cheat fluid into here, just so that I can see that all of these pipes connect properly. But I guess we'll just have to wait this time. Unbanning accounts they shouldn't have. Oh, the metaverse. That's a comedy gold mine right there. This this piping right here looks just silly and terrible, but it works, and it may be the only way to make this work. Okay. Uh, that underground is a problem, actually. Don't tell me we have to move all of this one tile. No. 
I think we have to move all of this one tile. If we're going to have our perfectly lined up substation pylon. Excellent. Come to think of it, if we did, like, double this here, we would probably run into some pipe input issues on that side. It's fine, let's just pretend that that's never gonna happen. It, it's, it's fine. That's what I'll tell myself. Anyone else having Colonel Will flashbacks? Uh-oh. Hey, T-Hacks. Uh, J101. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. West Duke. Welcome, welcome also. Feldak, you like that story? Oh. Wall of text. Okay. Uh... So, we have our inputs. They're going to be quite slow. Wait, what? Oh, there's a thing missing here. 16 of these gives us less than 12 per second for each physical input. So, we can do what we like with the input belt. And we're just going to say... I think I'll swap around which is going to be input and output because it'll be nice and clean if we just do two input belts and the output's going to be even slower. There we go. And copy paste this over here. We're just going to do the most basic of these because it's just one belt. And then... I guess I could do this part a little different. Yeah, that'll save a splitter. And now this is too close together to bother with an underground. And this one can go over here. Uh, okay, so that just leaves the fluid inputs. Output shouldn't be difficult. One, two, three, four. I guess I should have considered as well that the output belt wouldn't have to start from up here, but then it was going to be a repeating pattern anyway. That goes there. That goes there. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. And is it easiest to just copy paste this? Or are we going to run into trouble? We're going to run into trouble. How about temporary blueprint? Inserters only. 
Actually, inserters and the growth facilities. Everything else should line up the same, except for that one inserter. Which is going to be an output. Cool. Uh, we're going to need some... We're just barely going to need one more bit of pipe there. Move that down a little bit. Actually, can I line those up? No, I can't. This can go pretty much anywhere. Oh, I see what's different about that one. Okay. And what about... Whoops. What about you? this connect? Yeah, it does. That connects, that connects. How far can we go with this? All the way. So those two are connected. These two are connected. These two are connected. These two are connected. And then we can put these in the same spot. Oh wait, we need the underground belt as well. Um, that's fine, I guess. That's not going to be a problem, is it? And then, uh, I wonder if I could make this part more consistent. That connects. There we go. Okay. I think this monstrosity is nearing completion. Let's get, we have two fluids and one physical out. So we need a couple of high priority pickups because we're going to have one waste product on each side. And we're going to do fluid pickup, fluid pickup, and physical pickup on this side. Let's say we fill the whole block with this. That is still only 23 junk data cards per second. So I think what we'll do is... The bare minimum of storage. And this is our balancer, just limiting the chests. Okay, that one goes there. Uh, let's see, input can stop right about here and here. Input can stop here. Output doesn't stop there. Input can stop there. Input can stop there. And then... Uh, it's also slow that I'm perfectly happy to just... Uh, 